Drew, how much did the, the bye week just help in terms of recovery and just mental break and everything like that? Uh, I think it came at a nice time. Um, you know, seven games in, uh, a lot of tough opponents in that stretch. It was nice for the guys to get home, see their families, tell them they love them, um, and kind of reset and refocus. What's, uh, what's it like facing Navy? Obviously, you know how difficult this option is. You've played well against it yourself personally, but um, how critical is it um, against the option team to be just on your game as you guys know? It's got to be assignment sound. You know, uh, last year they had, what, 42 minutes of possession time. Um, and so it's critical to just not let them bleed yards down the field and to get our offensive ball back to give them enough possessions to win the game. This is a uh, year five for you now, I think, going against Navy. Do you try to tell any of the younger guys maybe some, you know, things that you might not pick up on film when it comes to that kind of an, an offense there? Um, I'll leave that to Alohi. I think he's, <laughs> even though I've played five years, he's more an expert. But yeah, just keying the young guys into their reads um, and getting everyone, getting their eyes right um, to play assignment sound. Speaking of Aloy, has he helped you guys this week? No one, because he obviously was recruited into that. I mean, not the offense, but still he was at Navy. How much has he helped this week, you think? I mean, he went against it for however long he was there, two years um, every day. And so obviously he knows keys and tendencies and um, can get pre-snap reads on plays. And so he's been a huge help for us. What do you think his emotions will be like? And how, what do you intend to tell him to try to calm down and keep an eye on uh, we'll see. I, he'll, he'll probably come in here and tell you all that. But yeah, he's a cool, calm, collected guy, and he'll be ready to play. What does he bring to the defense? Uh, just, just an intensity. Um, I think you know he makes plays in the run game for us. He makes plays in the in the pass game. Um, you know, I think of Michigan where he's knocking balls down from tight ends. Um, you know, jumping over me when I had a pass interference against Stanford. If not, that would have been a Sports Center top ten play. Um, he's just a dynamic player and makes plays for us. Are you happy that you want to play the option again after this game? Yeah, I'm glad they don't do that in the NFL. <laughs> that, uh, it's, uh, it feels like you've played a game already midweek during practice, just getting after it um, and you know hitting every single play. Drew, this is, I think, you're counting Georgia Tech and Army. It's probably your sixth game against the option. How much different was it the first time versus when you've seen this, the actual speed? I know you guys really work a show team more than other teams do right now annually all year long, but it's got to be 100% different the first time that your young players will be seeing. Yeah, I think, you know, when you play for the first few times, it's just so fast and you're like trying to find the ball. And after you've seen the look so many times, it's kind of like you get like your peripheral gets used to seeing a certain look and you know where the ball is going just based on your initial vision. And so um, things definitely just slow down for you. Are you dealing with position switches? How does that kind of change the way that you approach, you know, this, this offense? Yeah, a little different. Most of my time has been either at safety or on the edge. And so, you know, playing inside a little bit, obviously different keys, different reads. But at the end of the day, it's the same plays. Drew, what did you learn from playing with Greer Martini, who was amazing against the triple option? Yeah, dude's an animal. Um, I mean, we, <laughs> we watched his film every day on how he attacked it last year and played well. Um, you know, 18 tackles, and he's just been a monster ever since his freshman year at it. So just watching him, the tight lines he takes, the, you know, his footwork, uh, there's always something to learn from that. And it seems like Julian also has kind of a knack, whether he's at safety or corner. What do you see when you watch film of him on why he's so fast? <clears throat> well, Julian's just a baller. So, I mean, you put him on the field, he's going to, you know, he's going to hunt the ball down and make plays. Um, you know, ter terrific closing speed. Um, he's able to run the alleys for us and bring ball carriers down. What's the mindset of this group? Obviously, heading into the stretch run now, um, you guys are ranked high. You're undefeated, um, but obviously, you got to win these games. But and I imagine when you're home, you're hearing from a lot of people about how well you guys are doing. So, how do you guys kind of stay, stay together, and do what you got to do? Yeah, mine says uh, we got to beat Navy. How do you avoid Navy getting wrapped up in all that stuff? I mean, obviously, it's probably not as big of an issue for you, but. How do you make sure the rest of the team kind of stays grounded and stays level? I mean, we told them, like, we got caught up in it last year and lost our opportunity to play. 2015, same thing. Um, and so, you know, we've been in this position multiple times. You know, it seems like Notre Dame fans, and rightfully so, are craving for, you know, another shot at the national title. Haven't won one in 30 years. And so, you know, you know how the Notre Dame fans are. Oh, it's our year, it's our year, it's our year. <laughs> and then when you're in a position at the end of the year to do it, you know, everyone's, you know, patting you up and talking how great you are. 
Um, and if you listen to that, you're going you're gonna to end up losing focus and you're going to end up losing. So uh, we got to stay locked in, learn from our mistakes in previous years, and, and, and finish our job this year. The defensive line has done a really good job putting pressure on guys. How much easier have they made your guys' job in the linebacker position? It's great. When you put pressure on the quarterback, he's got to get rid of the ball faster. You know, they pull double teams off of Tavon and I and allow us just to run free through the alleys. And so, um, you know, I've had a – you know, this is my first time really in the box, so I don't, I don't know what it's like to not play with a good defensive line in front of me. So um, I know they've made my job easy this year, and um, they've made plays all over the field for us. How many cut blocks did you encounter against this offense in your different previous positions, and you expect to see more of that now playing inside? Yeah, it's tough inside. I mean, um, especially with the rule change with the, the five yard. Um, you know, a lot more cutting on the edge from A-backs trying to get your outside leg. Um, you don't necessarily see as much of that inside, but you've got to be able to scrape over top and, and get to the fullback. It's more dive focused inside, um, whereas the outside you were worried about pitching quarterback. Did you play against the offense or option much in high school? Is that mm, never. Yeah, never. Drew, you talked about like when you have a defensive line rotation that makes your job as a linebacker easier. Your high school quarterback made them harder. But I was curious if you remember when the college Dalen Vass came in. If you notice like how athletic those guys were, like if you notice that they were sort of a different cut of athlete right away, or is, have they sort of grown on you? I mean, I remember Dalen coming in and kind of playing for us right away. Um, I I think I really remember them in the off season after their first year, um, that spring ball kind of taken off, and I was their like, second spring. Yeah, um, and you know Khalid especially just with his long arms and his, we, he's just the technician. He's got the best pass rush technique probably on the team. Um, and so just to have that Julian Aquora, just the athleticism, the length, um, the speed, the initial suddenness off the line, um, you could definitely tell was different than maybe some of the big framed bodies, you know, we had recruited in years past. And I guess like in terms of Notre Dame having a reputation for a pass rushing defensive line, is that pick up on that outside? Like, because that's something totally new. When you hear mm -hmm. commentators talk about Notre Dame, you got to look out for their pass rush. That's not something people have said. Yeah. About Notre Dame yeah, it's normally been a, you know, big front seven that's, that stuffs the run and, you know, elite corners and, and safeties that can finish on the ball. But, um, I mean, if you just look at how the game's evolving, you know, you have to evolve to have a pass rush just with the way the league's evolving, college and the NFL. It's just more passing oriented. You know, rules are getting put in place to, to help offensive score more points. And so you just got to have a pass rush to get to the quarterback. Yeah. Yep. Drew, are there any connections to trying to defend the read option out of the spread book between that and the triple option that help you guys to know what to expect? Can you repeat that? Is there any connection between having to defend like a read option out of the spread and having to defend this triple option? Is there any similarities that can help? Not really. I mean, triple option is its own animal, man. It's, uh, it's, it's way different. Yeah. How's the hand? Oh, it's good. Coming along. Um, hopefully, we'll be out of this in a week or two. So that'll be great. I see more people have signed it now since we last got to talk to you. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to make more friends. Yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs>